Indeed. Well, let's quickly move on to our next issue of discussion. Bearing in mind last-minute intervention, a two-day warning strike by the organized labor will rock Nigeria beginning on Tuesday. And President of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, Joe Ajero, said the union is insisting on the warning strike and there will be no drama of last-minute suspension. And Ajero said the strike became imperative due to the refusal of the government to engage relevant stakeholders for dialogue. Well, let's hear the NLC president. To embark on a total and indefinite shutdown of the nation within 14 working days or 21 days from today until steps are taken by the government to address the excruciating mass suffering and the impoverishment being experienced around the country. What are we asking for? That these issues be addressed. If we don't talk, after shutdown, we we'll still come back to talk. So which one is better? I want you to understand how we work. Even at the last minute, last hour, to the expiration of our ultimatum, the trade unions will talk. NLC President Joe Ajero speaking there. Now, GKB, we understand Fuel subsidy removal and going given by the historical context uh, by which everything started from what issues or what are what lessons rather would you say we can draw from previous strikes we've had concerning this this situation or this matter that seems to be lingering now and then? Well, not let's sugarcoat it. Things are hard. <laughs> you know, for everybody. Things are extremely hard. But that is not an excuse to commence a juvenile strike just because you can. You've agreed with government at a point in time that there will be palliatives. The palliatives are just kicking in. I have nothing against them going on morning strike if they think they will get them anything. But you and I know that this is your grandstanding. Mm. Because technically, what will the two-day warning strike achieve? Apart from keeping more suffering mm -hmm. on the people. people. So they will not access their money, and will not access uh, transportation to work. And some who are paid daily will not suffer for those two days. Like I said, things are extremely hard. So let's pretend they are not. But is this the best option left for labor? I think not. So what would you think? I think that what labor ought to have done was to make sure that the moment the federal government agreed that the state governments will land do policy that their state branches started dealing directly with those governors and not, no longer make it a national issue. That's what I would have done. Mm. If I were to be the NLC president, the moment it was agreed that state governors are going to be in charge of politics in their states, yeah. the state branches of NLC, or state branches of whatever name they call themselves, by today they will be holding the juggler of those governors because they will know, they have the data of what exactly is going on and how it is being spread. We keep talking about federation, we keep behaving like a unitary state. It's irritating because you've agreed you are going to go on strike, fine. But you also said you are dealing with federal government, wonderful. But you have agreed that this thing will go to the local uh, the states, mm. fantastic. I've not heard a labor a state chairman issue a, a statement on what the state governors are doing regarding this. And we keep saying that all politics are local. Mm -hmm. You now go on strike. Will I, will I change the fundamentals in uh, Bono State, where the governor is already doing, going beyond the call of duty, even before politics were created? Or will it change anybody's mind fundamentally? In a state, state like Oshun, where the governor has made up his mind to do ABCD. Or in some states I cannot mention, or I've not even mentioned anything at all. It's time we start going after the governors. Unless we start doing that as labor unions or as individuals or as journalists, these people will get away with murder. We just keep blaming the federal government for everything. I don't, don't get me wrong. I get you. Very they have their own force. Yeah. They have their own force at the federal level. But I think, in my own little way, that by today, the NDLC should be talking to us via their state branches on what the governors are doing or what they are planning to do or what they have agreed to do, putting labor into context. Mm, indeed, well put, it, well put out there from GKB. But Paul, would you agree perhaps that this is 
a wrong path that NLC has followed, and they should have you know, devised other means altogether. Absolutely. You know, when I heard about this strike, I, I just said, is there no other thing they work can do apart from going on strike? I remember the other time that they said they were going on strike here. Yeah, I think it was Labour. One of my friends, a professor in one university, it was like, he saw the, I, I, I wrote something on my WhatsApp status, I was like, no, not again. Even people are tired. People are tired. The workers are tired of going on strike because of the uh, way it cripples the economy. The hardship. Now, this is by no means, I'm not trying to undermine the suffering. We are all in it together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that what I buy a liter of oil is different from, the amount I buy a liter of oil is different from what I use the, to buy before. it before. So we all know that. I know that. All of us here, we know that there, there, there is a rising cost of, of commodities living, yeah. and every, everything. So I am not living on planet Mars. So we understand it. Now, we also understand that government is rolling out is uh, palliative. palliative already. You may not agree. You may think that they should do more. Fine. That's a valid argument. You may not even agree with the way it's being done. You, are, you, are, you have that right. But then, are there no other ways of engaging? He said, he talked about setting up monitoring organs mm -hmm. in the state, labor, monitoring what these governors are doing. The other time, some people were joking on the social media that the only governors they can trust with this five billion uh, given to them by federal government, uh, they mentioned Zulum and maybe one or two big uh, amount of Quara and all of that, all of that. Now, if that is true, why can't labor, you know, monitor these governors and make sure that the five billion other palliatives they are collecting are used judiciously? Uh, but besides, see, a new cab the cabinet is just taking shape. Now, you just have a minister of labor and productivity who is supposed to lead now, who I believe is supposed to lead the dialogue, you know, the engagement on, be, on behalf of uh, the federal government. I'm not even sure the man has even settled down to even understand all the issues. Probably still getting briefings. I, I am thinking that what the labor should have been doing now is to seek an audience with the man, explain their own, you know, their own position to the man, talk about what they feel is going wrong with the way the thing is being done, and then let, let mind meet. But every time, strike. Every time, strike. At some point, I just hope that we don't get impervious to heat. You know, FJ just, okay. They don't know more than strike. Nothing more than that. When you are tired, you come, come back. You, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and then, even people, some people are getting tired. Already, I learned uh, I, I can't, that TUC pulled out of the. Yeah, uh, that's uh, exactly what uh, I wanted to do. The TUC pulled you know, out of yes. it. That TUC doesn't believe in what the NLC and is doing. And also, the NECA is not really, exactly. you know, not sure of the. The other time, NLC was going right. on strike. Lagos State Civil Service said, we are not joining you. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, there should be other ways of dealing with this. Everything cannot be strike, 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 strike. It's you know, it's, it's, the strike is even supposed to be the ultimate weapon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Something you use, as, you use as last resort. Exactly. Now we use it basically mm -hmm. to play table tennis. Before you say anything, anybody wants to fight with his wife. Right. Strike. <laughs> the, the, the soup money is not enough. It's strike. <laughs> it's, we, are, we are making serious issues look pedestrian mm. and petty. Mm. No government will respect anybody who assumes that the best course of action is also to go for. Like I said, there are options. I expect that by today, instead of talking about strike, you will roll out the report of the states about the preparedness of the state governments and the ones that are not doing well, and then name shame them. Mm. So people will know that, fine, so that government has given X, Y, Z, this government has refused to do anything about it. And it's just ordering cars or buying new houses. So people will know. But you keep shielding people at that level and then blaming the federal government for everything. I will not solve our problem until we stop that mindset. And there are people that have local government, there are people that have state government that also have access to money that belongs to us. And you know, looking at this from a global scale, it definitely it would spark you know, a level of, um, it will, you know, in terms of the economy and in terms of the implications this could have on the global, on our polity. What, on a large scale, do you see? Uh, foresee the strike, you know, having on the economy, not just for the two days warning strike now. I'm talking about the effect that this strike would have on the long term. Well, they will go on strike. We'll have challenges for two or three days. Mm. Then we'll go back to business as usual. They'll go back. Because we've learned, and you and I know, that the more they do this, the less their supporters will follow them. And you get to a point that people simply ignore them. And one thing that the labor union cannot afford is relevance. All over the world. So they, most of the time, they know when to pull back, apply the brakes. 
But if you keep going along this route, you keep going along this route, ultimately to get to a point that your supporters will simply leave you behind. That to me is the danger. Because you need a very strong labor union to checkmate government at every level. And if, I'm a believer in that fundamental right to fight for your rights. Mm -hmm. They should not turn into a joke so that in three, four, five years, when you say you are going on strike, people just ignore you. And then our people will continue to suffer because there are no people to defend their interests at that level. Mm. So, Paul, you know, from, let me have your perspective. Now, what implications now do you think this strike could have on Nigeria's standing in the global community, especially in terms of the economic policies? Of course, um, strikes do not help the economy. It, it, it leads to sufferings, more suffering. Uh, it, it leads to, you know, people becoming poorer, you know, Nigeria losing a lot of revenue in, do, in those two, three days. In fact, if you quantify what Nigeria is likely to lose in those um, two days of strike, it's not something that um, we should be talking about. It's not something that it's not experience should be having in an economy that is not uh, even strong. So whether it's a strike for one day or two days or one week, it is, it's going to have a, a serious impact. And that is why labor should also rethink its strategy. You know, we, like he said, strike should be a, a last, last, minute result, result. last minute result. But I do not think we need a strike now. I do not think we need it now. Honestly, I don't think we do. Well, let's, get, let's wait and see how things unfold. Uh, well, tomorrow is expected for the strike will begin, but let's wait and see how things will turn out. Well, that's about it on today's edition of Journalist Hangout. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch a repeat broadcast of it tonight at 11. You can also join us again on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. And we are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. And before I go, I'd like to thank my guests here in the studio, Gani Kaede Balogu. Thank you so much for your insight. Always a pleasure. And Paul Dada, it's a pleasure as always to have you on the program. Thank you very much.